I'm Mitch from Black Cloud. We're down here at the Tattoo Music Lounge. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We have uh, a doom metal band in. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. We've got Black Cloud in the state. Today I found out we are doom metal. <laughs> That's what it says. It says listed. Yeah, we're we're that somewhat. Yeah, I'd say we're 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 listed as doom metal. I'd say like yeah, maybe doom, like maybe. black and black <laughs> and doom. Yeah, black metal doom metal. Yeah, black metal. Big. The biggest question is what were your influences? To, to, uh, when you were growing up. <laughs> Don't look at me. Go ahead, Bryce. All right, let's we hear from Mitchell. Well, I mean, I was listening to, like, Corrosion of Conformity. Mm. That was a lot of what I, uh, I was really digging them as a young'un. <laughs> so you're gonna, I, are you going to come down here and see them uh, when they play with uh, Ministry? I would like to, but... Uh, yeah, it just all just depends on what our schedule looks like with that. Because that's a good show. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, so I think this is good. When me and Bryce were in high school, he just saw on my iPod, I was listening to Suicide Silence, and he's like, oh dude, I, I listened to that shit, and then we became friends. <laughs> 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 yeah, for me, it was always my buddy Joe. We were just listening to, like, he was really uh, big into like job for a cowboy. We were listening to a lot of demo board gear. Yeah, growing up, it was like that 2008 Winds of Plague <laughs> shit. Like, give me a breakdown. And like, I, I remember when I was younger, if your band had clean vocals, you were the biggest pussies in the world. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, with, uh, you know, the band and everything, I mean, how long have you been around? I think uh, we started up, what, like a year and a half ago? Oh, COVID? Pre-COVID? Yeah. Yeah, I had... Pre-COVID? Uh, I had actually this project, like, completely different and different members and stuff, and mm -hmm. just shit was going awry kind of a little bit before COVID hit, and then I would say, like, maybe right after kind of the big stuff and shit, me and Mitch started getting together yeah, and putting together around. what it is now. I've been around. Bryce is, yeah, he's kind of, uh, he was an addition later in the band. How long do you think you've been in the band now? I don't even know. I've been around. He's been around. <laughs> he's, been, he's been around. He's been around. around. I've, I've been, been around. around. <laughs> he's like, I fucking hate these guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I can't find a better band. Because <laughs> Bryce, Bryce reminds me of somebody. My old band? No. Jumping into something else really quickly. I just got a scenario. I just, just came to my head. Okay, three other bands you'd play with at what venue? Local or national? Any any venue? Any venue. Any bands? Uh, just a sprue, just a. You know, does it have to be rock? No. It can be whatever Anything. kind of music you want. A little yes. dicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. Oh, shit. That'd be a good show. I, I'd see a little Dicky live. That's a good one. All right, Bright. All right, Mitch, who's yours? Put a band on the bill. Oh, man. Any band. Any, you got three bands? It's got to be current, because, no. like, if I could have an old lineup, no. that'd be dope. Yeah, no, three bands, a venue, national, or... I would like... Um, yeah. I would like... Local. You know what? The Palace would be dope to play at. And if, if it was I, still up. Yeah, if it was still up, <laughs> you know... Like if I'm choosing if I'm choosing that I'd want to do an old member uh, the old members of Scar Symmetry because with Christian as their singer and they had to replace him with two guys. I have no idea who that is. Never heard that name before. I haven't heard a lot of the names you guys have been talking about. Today. Oh come on. <laughs> so we got what was that band's name, Mitch? Scar Symmetry, and two other bands. And Lil oh, band. and two other bands. Yeah, you have three. Uh, I said th uh, three bands. He said Little Diggy. Scar yeah. Symmetry, that counts. probably Meshuga. Meshuga would Ooh. be fun to play with. And then oh, like, and old uh, school Pine Knob. And like Neck Not right. new <laughs> Pine Knob. <laughs> Not new, no, old. old you guys pine both knob. picked Michigan venues. Anywhere in the world, and you're not. Red, the no, the I Red said, Rock. I said either Logan or That would be a good one. That would be a good yeah. one. Yeah. 
local or or international. And you said the place is tore down. I know. <laughs> yeah, it would be it would be awesome. It would be awesome to actually play there if it were still around. I'm going with Madison Square Garden. Ooh, Ooh. all right. That would be so fucking. I don't know if I, I don't know. I was working in New York and I went and seen Kendrick Lamar there. Is he on your bill too? Black Cloud, Lil Dicky, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I didn't want to go, but I was the only other person that was working that drove to oh. New York, so I had to drive them to this concert. Man, I wish this was Lil Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> he is cool though. All right, any band to play with? Three other bands. Local, and a national set. Like around here, you pick somebody. Oh, I got okay. three bands. Okay. And then, okay. Someplace else, national. Oh shoot! I... Yo, I'd I'd love to play again. Old school. Me and Bryce, when we played in an older band, we used to play a lot with uh, No Life. And I and back when they their drummer was still around, Maddie Martins. He was a. Uh, pretty cool and that was a pretty cool era of that but they're band not no life no more yeah i know but when that like that era of them though too was just so much fun to play with and they were super respectful now uh you know with uh when covid hit i mean did you start when did you start uh, you've been writing music since yeah i would say we we've been putting together songs and slowly recording them at flatlander audio recording and carl that's ran by anthony lee he's a really cool guy really cool studio and we've recorded mitchell's parts my parts and our bass players parts and we just been and we're still writing past you know what we expect to release on the ep and stuff like that so are you doing are you gonna do a full length we're just gonna do four do songs four on songs? our first one it's our first thing so we're just like let's get something out oh nice <laughs> uh i mean uh, how long have they take, been taken um, to write or put together? Excuse me. Each song. Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I was just putting down just came from random, I guess, practice sessions. I'm just sitting down playing the guitar. Mm. And my parts. I, I think we got, what, like eight months into writing six songs ish, ish, I'd say. Mm. That sounds fair. So sounds when I right. joined was when I first bought a seven string. So it took a minute to like get used to that seven string to start writing leads. And then once I finally got comfortable with it, everything was nice and solid, went and bought an eight string. Oh, nice. And it was like that process all over again, but just more hand cramps. More well, hey, you know, you gotta That's widen the you gotta widen yeah. the neck one string at a time to just kinda oh, like work shit. your way up to it. <laughs> uh no it's that fucking specific time period, a lot of CKY, Pantera, Brand Brand Pantera. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Brandon Grandass. Oh yeah. I saw Pantera a couple times too. <laughs> if he's listening. I sent I sent Mike a link. This is okay. my shout out to Mike. I love that dude. I still talk to him a little bit. His brother, however, God fucking rest his soul. And <laughs> he fucking can. <laughs> May he get it together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, being a local band, you know you know your venues around here, right? I used to. <laughs> kind of. We're more... Uh, from previous stuff that me and Mitch have done in different bands, actually, we played it quite a bit out of state and stuff. We'll do a group of kids, so locally that would be a really cool band to just have that and capture it again, mm -hmm. for sure, on the local list. On the national bill, I would love to play with, like, number 12 looks like you or something just absolutely nuts. That way there we're not, like, the nutty band ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is it? Guar. Um, uh, what's another one? Meshuga. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Meshuga would be a great one to play with just because I feel like they would have, their fans would probably have a better appeal to metal in general than just like, mm -hmm. you so know what I mean? Some people I got, are. I got weird. two more to broaden my range. 
Sure. Oh, yeah. All right, little Dicky, let's hear it. <laughs> so on the right side, I'd have Lava Spew. Hell yeah. Ooh. And then on the left side, I'd have CKY. That'd Ooh. Be, All right. That'd be jamming I, I for could, sure. I, I have a beautiful Harpo story for you. When our first band played at uh, Eyes for a Horse, we played Harpo's. My little brother is like 15, maybe 16 years old, right? Yeah. And this is probably the end times of greasy, greasy, nasty Harpo's. Uh, so me and my brother, he's like, man, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, he's, this is a young kid, you know? I'm myself, I'm like 17 or 18, so I'm like, all right, whatever, let's go. Maybe I'll get some nachos or something. And we walk into the bathroom and there's a crowd of fucking people and they're all like, there's one dude in the corner and everybody's staring at him. We think there's a fight or something. You know, we're standing in like a foot of fucking piss water. And I'm like, this is great, Tyler. You need to fucking go take a piss, bro. Go do it. And this dude, I, I walk up to the corner. This dude's got his fucking, he's dropped trowel and he's got his dick out and he's got a tattoo of a dragon across his stomach. And the dick is the head of the dragon. Oh and I'm God. like, Tyler, take a piss, hurry up, we need to go. <laughs> the number. Well, I fucking love that story. I love my little brother for the hell. We put him through hell and we didn't even realize what we were doing. You know, like we were playing like Aloha Lounge and Flint Local and shit. All our merch at the time came from the one and only grandmother stitching it. Herself. Yeah, yeah. We would just cut out the letters out of fabric and she'd stitch them on the shirts for nice. us and shit. <laughs> and dude, we, and seriously, my little brother, fucking 15 or 16 when he was playing in that band and we're dragging him to these venues and shit. And my mom and stepdad are showing up and he's going, can I get a ride home? Can we stop by Big John's? <laughs> Would you start your own festival if you had a chance? Oh, shoot. Hell no. <laughs> we, we did have our own festival, actually. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, we used to run Timberfest. I think it ran two years. We had two years. Three. Did we it have three? Was it two? I'm pretty sure it was two. We did one year on your lake, on the pond. And then we did one year at Don's house. And then there was, Pat did Death of Leaves. That's right. Yeah, on the same thing. But we did Timberfest, and that was pretty much at the time. We were like 17, and we're like, damn, no venues will book us, so we'll just start our own show. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, you got to do something. Yeah. Yeah. And then people will ask us to be on the show, so I was like, we, I think we're cool now.